Yeah, well, thank you very much for coming. Uh, I'm going to read a statement, and then after, I am certainly prepared to uh, take questions uh, regarding the uh, their campaign. Uh, in my 40 years of collective bargaining, I have never seen the level of anger that I have seen by this membership at Air Canada. Clearly, the recent tentative agreement with Air Canada did not address the concerns of the membership as it was rejected by 66%, and we were given a strike mandate of 78%. To put it in pers pers perspective, uh, we have gone back to the restructuring of the Air Canada in Canada when our membership agreed to cost savings in the hundreds of millions of dollars to save this airline. Many promises were made at that time, and the company stated that they would not break up the company. Then the company sold off many of its profitable assets, totaling over $2 billion. The IAM then wrote to the board of directors and asked them to do the responsible thing and pay down the pension debt. They were not prepared to do so. Instead, they allowed the top executives to walk away with millions of dollars in compensation while our members continued to suffer. Robert Milton, 100 million. Mr. Brewer, 17 million. And the millions go on. Meanwhile, our members are falling behind. This just is not fair. Then in 2009, we were asked to bail out our pension fund again. This time, the membership agreed to defer payment until 2014. Again, our membership was asked to agree to a deferred payment, and they agreed. Now a quick snapshot at the present. Here we are for the first time in over a decade that the IAM workers at Air Canada have been able to bargain for a new collective agreement. Finally, a tentative agreement was reached with the assistance of a government appointed conciliator. While bargaining, the IAM membership believed that they were being asked again to pay for concessions they already had paid for under CCAA. Our negotiating committee did the best that they could under these circumstances by bringing a collective agreement back to the membership for a vote. The anger in our membership was felt at the ratification meetings from coast to coast to coast. And the tentative agreement was rejected. On Monday, March the 5th, the IAM bargaining committee, along with the top leadership of this union, Myself and the Directing General Chairman of District Lodge 140, Mr. Chuck Atkinson, met with Air Canada and resumed negotiations. The committee, having had listened to the membership and their anger, tried to address these concerns by discussing them with Air Canada. It became clear by Tuesday afternoon that Air Canada was not prepared to make the necessary adjustments to reach an agreement that our members would accept. Under the Canada Labour Code, we are required to give the employer a minimum of 72 hours notice prior to taking strike action. On March 6, at approximately 5.30 p.m., we gave Air Canada 144 hours notice that on Monday, March the 12th at 12.01 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will exercise our legal right to strike. We hope that Lisa Rake, the Minister of Labor, will allow us to negotiate an agreement that is acceptable to our membership. 
We have advised Air Canada that we are available at a moment's notice to resume bargaining. 